Okay, so welcome to the Spatial Mountain Dashboard class. We're beginning the recording for the training webinars you can always use for future review. Now we're all logged into the site. So this is how Spatial Mountain is on the front end of a site. We're going to go ahead and peer that in from the back end of a WordPress and see how we really do uh, manipulate that map there. So once you are logged into the back of your WordPress site, what you do is you go right down on here on your left hand dashboard menu and you find spatial match. These are where all your maps are going to live. Uh, you can have the spatial match plugin itself up to five different sites. So it's also kind of important if you wanted to use it across multiple sites. And these are where all your maps live. Um, Michelle, is there any particular neighborhood that you wanted to build out anytime soon? And we can go ahead and take care of that right now with us. All the maps live right here. We're going to go ahead and add on over to add a new map. Downtown the Hill, you got it, Michelle. So go right in here. I'm going to leave the title blinking for now. So when you do open your spatial match out, it's going to open up to a very obscure location. Uh, it'll either be Florida or San Diego. It's very default. No worries. The first step is you go right over here and you type in a city, a city or zip code to kind of bring you a little bit closer to your area. Okay, I'm just going to pull this a little closer into Texas. No worries, even better if it's not on the geographic map area. I was hoping that would be close enough to bring us in a little bit. Let's see how many San Antonio's there are. If I just type this right into the geolocator, usually it works best with um, a zip code. However, I am not too familiar with every zip code on top of my head. I probably have more URLs on top of my head rather than a zip code. Uh, either one, you just type in a city or a zip code right in here to the geo bar. What that does is that pulls you in directly closer to your area. Let's go ahead and do the exact zip code of the particular area. Now, we'll do a very loose one and then you can go ahead and readjust it moving forward. So as you know, on here you can go ahead and it's extremely interactive. Whatever you select on the map is exactly what will populate vice versa. So if I were to remove all option here, instantly you see homes disappearing and only single family homes are being represented. If I move that around and now only townhouses are being represented, it pops up very instantly. Also, wherever you move that map, that's where all your options will read change on the right hand side. So if I zoom out and zoom on in, everything repopulates and regenerates itself. Uh, this goes for if you'd like to use anything else, uh, whether it be lands, multifamily, as long as you have it selected, it will instantly show up on that map. There we go. So we have that there. Now, lifestyle search is extremely cool. It's really cool to build different pages based around lifestyle search. Uh, for example, if you wanted to do homes near uh, golf course ranges, fitness centers, anything like that, uh, sometimes places of shopping, big shopping centers um, are around there. And when you do this lifestyle search, what it does, it represents, it lets them know what is available on that map. So if you click on over here, and you type in elementary schools, all the elementary schools will show up. This does not limit the search. It simply shows what's available within that map. Now, the most commonly used of spatial matches is when you section off for a particular neighborhood, whether it be a lot of uh, condos or you want to do specific multifamilies or anything like that. So the way you section off and filter on out is you go right on over to select areas. and we'll let that load on up. So on here, again, wherever you drag that map, it's gonna automatically rechange the search results. So if you're not seeing something showing up, always make sure that it is drawn in, um, it's being center focused within that map. So let's focus on this particular zip code. We're back on over here, and I'll show you different ways we can actually do something, and I love showing something that's not already pre populated on the map because there are ways around that. So if you go in here, you'll see all the neighborhoods that are being selected. And we have no downtown or the hill. We do have Hill, High County, and Hill County. Sometimes they're a little small. 
let's see. So always make sure to go on there and search through that. You'll be surprised at the amount of small neighborhoods they have on there. There's even a good amount of subdivisions. So it could very well be represented on the map. And cities and counties and also do by school districts. Yes, all the areas from MLS are loaded and they're even more, um, we do take pride in our maps, so we do even do further research on that everything is on there. We're still growing and again, with new little construction areas and new little areas kind of popping on up and sectioned on off, um, we always continue to grow. Uh, so it's MLS for sure is incorporated in there. And then on top of that, we do additional build out uh, for certain sub areas, for certain fluid communities. So go in there. And I'm going to go ahead and just select that zip code. And now if you notice now that that's selected, everything else outside of that zip code is no longer searchable and it's just filtered out and we're exclusively just showing this zip code. I am curious to see if there is a district or city within this area. So I'm going to kind of zoom in and make sure that's really specific and see if we do have any sub neighborhoods in there. We have that selected by zip code. Let's say, for example, we couldn't find it in zip code, we can't find it in subdivision, we can't find it anything else just for downtown the hill. That is the case here. You can always add your own geographic area. So you go in there, you're just going to create a login for yourself. I find it best to just use your email address and the word password. It's the simplest one to use, and you'll never forget that. You can use a rectangle, a circle, or a freehand to draw out that particular neighborhood. So let's say, for example, I knew my borders, and I'm just going to draw that. You can select that and save that whatever you'd like. And now it's, that's its own sectioned off, and you have that currently active. If I were to move the other zip code, that would be the only one that stands. Yeah, not going to save. They're just kind of teaching you guys the user functionality of it just because I know there's a particular neighborhood that you're definitely going to need uh, to draw your specifics on there. That's how you would draw that guy on out. You can have multiple neighborhoods shown on one map. Nothing says you only have to have one. So if you wanted to do a map with certain area zip codes or, again, uh, different neighborhoods within a downtown, it would be great to do so. Let's go back and kind of section that out that way. So this is the way you use the front end of spatial match. Um, the way you save it on the back end side, that's exactly how it displays on the front end side. So whatever you decide to choose the section off, however you decide to display it, even as, you know how zoomed in you are, how zoomed out, that's all going to be manipulated to the way you want to do things. And always make sure we go right back here because you can save it in here. You have different options on the other side if you want to do featured. That means your MLS ID is attached to Spatial Match, and it's only going to show uh, the properties you have within your office. You also have little keywords like waterfront. And you can type in any keywords you would like. If you know a particular area uh, is known for something, whether it be you know waterfront or the school district or it's just kind of sectioned on off, any keyword insert to MLS, this will also pull that up, um, including addresses for different like property communities. Here's a little bit of extra stuff here. Like if for an exact neighborhood amenities, that means you're going to be showing exclusively communities. There we go. It's going to be one of those things the more you play with, and the more you feel a little more comfortable with that. So that's more or less the front side of Spatial Match. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to do the dashboard. I apologize, I did skip a step. Now let's say we have this map all saved out and we want to know how to display that on an actual page. So just for now, I'm going to keep this one as a sample and do area of interest. And we're going to go right down there and click save. And I'll teach you guys how to make this on an actual page. So we just go to add a new page. And with any of your pages, whether it be an agent page, a geofarm neighborhood, uh, anywhere that you have this little box available, you always want to make sure you're in visual. And then you drop down that toolbar, and you notice a little row of all these home junction plugins. So we're just going to go over there and find spatial match. 
select here, and the most recent map uh, will show first. So we have area of interest, and you always want to make sure that's 100% width. 100% uh, is extremely important because this section can be read as pixels or percentage. So we want to do that 100% and seven height. Uh, when we do set up all websites, we normally give at the very minimum uh, one neighborhood map and one regular search map. So if you ever forget these exact specifications, feel free to open one up that we've done for you guys and you guys can just go in there and say, oh, that's right, 100% and 700 height and we're good to go. I am going to publish this. This does not make um, this live. It just makes it on the right of the back end side. So don't worry, Michelle, this is not going anywhere into the front end of your page and we will delete it right on after. It's just so that we can go ahead and view what we just built. So there you go, nice completed map, exactly how we see that on the back end side. It's now displaying on the front. Now let's say you have this on a map and you want to, it's already living on the site and you want to change what it looks like, change what it does. You don't need to do it for every single page. What you actually do is you go into your spatial match, all area maps, and whenever you adjust anything on this map, it'll automatically save itself over there since it's pulling from that map ID. So let's say you decide, you know what, I want to dedicate this page to more than one zip code. We would just zoom out a little bit, go ahead and select that additional zip code. And again, this is all just for example and show. So let's say we wanted to include the little one right there. If I just go right down over here and save changes, go to the front of our site, refresh, that change will automatically show. Now we have that additional zip code. So that's more or less how we use every kind of specifications on the front end of the side. Now, spatial match is extra special because it is an IDX. It's a live feed. Everything's populated automatically from MLS, all the listings. We also do have a BDX feed. It's its own independent live feed. And not just that, but spatial match has its own back end, its own dashboard itself, not one that lives with inside your WordPress dashboard. So this is your normal WordPress dashboard, but Spatial Maps exclusively has its own dashboard. So I'll go ahead and take you guys on over there. If you do not have logins to this, let me know, and I'll make sure to get them on over to you. So we have dashboard.homejunction.com. And once you enter in there, you're going to have an email address and a password. Your password normally is your license key. Um, when you do have a site live, they should send it to you automatically. Um, we can never see your password. We can always reset it for you. So I can send you that lost password if need be. This is a sample site, uh, so don't be alarmed if we're not too many analytics or opportunities. So this is the dashboard exclusively just to Spatial Match. This is only showing information relevant on and associated with Spatial Match. So the very first line is opportunities. And I should have used a different data. Actually, give me one second. I'm going to go to a different demo site. This is a more relevant demo site that we've used previously, so I know it's got a, a lot of stuff in there. This looks exactly the same. So we go to opportunities. Opportunity means everyone that's registered with your spatial match, anyone who signed up, anyone who set uh, save searches, set property alerts, anyone who's actually put their information directly into spatial match. So once you go there, you can see all their names phone number, and if you they ever choose to unsubscribe and no longer receive updates from Spatial Match, if you click on any of the blue, you're always going to be able to see just a little more information. So once you go in there, you have their name, their email address, phone number, the date that they registered, and you can also see which site they've been visiting. This is important if you have Spatial Match on multiple sites, and you can always see which one they were particularly working with, and you can see which one's more popular. This one does not have any saved searches, but if they had... Oh, there's one. So they had a house for safe search. So if someone is logged in, you can see all the specifications, exactly what they're filtering out and more closely to what they're looking for. Anything blue, always click on over and it'll provide you a little more information. This is the date of their visit and the time of their visit. And if you click on in, you can see everything they did within that time of that visit. Everything they searched for, everything they clicked on, it's all going to be logged on in. 
now in your analytics is where you can see what everyone does on Spatial Match, registered and non-spatial, non-registered users. The difference will be is that they won't have a name and an IP address instead. Again, this is a demo site, so let me go ahead and go back when we use this one a little more frequently. I don't think it took my never select the date. There we go. Okay. So during that time span, this is the amount of users that we've had, number of sessions, just an overall activity log. You can see how many unregistered users are using your site versus registered users. So you can see maybe if you're getting more registered than unregistered or vice versa, kind of what you can do, maybe possibly prompt some registration forms or provide some limits. Within user, that's where you're going to see all the analytics available within registered and non-registered sites. And I'll let that load right on up. So as you notice, if they're just IP users, which means they did not provide any of their emails, uh, then it'll just be a couple of numbers popping up here. Um, the ones that have registered will have their name along with their email address. This is important, it's just like any other analytics, it's just to kind of train and track what is being done on your site. If you're getting the most common searches over and over again, if you're getting a vast amount of searches for a specific area, you know kind of what to focus on and possibly build out a page exclusively for that. Again, you click on any blue and it's gonna give you more information. So this was at this time, the length, IP address, and what they did on their visit. Nope, probably sold by now. <laughs> um, you can also, again, if they viewed a particular property, you can click on that and it'll give you specifications of that property. If you're getting a lot of property that's getting a lot of information or a lot of heat, a lot of interaction, then again, make a page of it, put it on your home page. It's just a great way to track everything. With your analytics, we're going to go right on over to preferences. This is where you can, it's probably a little more important. These are where all your settings are within Spatial Match. Uh, probably the most important within here is going to be right down over here. Right with MLS, you decide exactly what you want to display. Uh, some people don't want to deal with land and vacant lots, or a, they exclusively only want to do uh, rentals or, you know, residential properties and no longer farms or vice versa. So you can select exactly what is available to be searched within your Spatial Match. And then down here is your limits. This is where you can edit and set up how many times someone can click on a certain specification without being required to register before they can access that. So play around with that. Um, we do start standard. I think it's like 15. And then from there, you can play with it. See if you're getting a lot of registered users. Um, you don't want to give everything away for free, but some people really want a full access site. Just, you know, they want to be very represented and have all information without proper register. So play with this guy. That's where that all would be. The rest is just, again, little specifications that require you. These are your frequent email alerts to yourself um, if you want to get up to date as quickly as possible. Types of registrations they have, uh, passwords not expiring, quality control, them having to do the Kappa. Yeah. A little more so here. This would be the back end of Spatial Match. And then we have the front end. So I'm going to go and open up the Q&A portion of this webinar. And I'm also going to stop the recording. So we can make sure to send that over to our friends who did not make it today. So give me one second while I unmute and stop the recording. And we'll open up the Q&A and I'll answer any of your questions you have for me.